Hi, and welcome back to this Indefensible New Zealand first podcast of 2024. I'm Simon Ewing Jarvey. There's been a lot of speculation about defence since the announcement of the new cabinet. I would classify much of this as breathless longing, uh, in that many are joining the dots between last year's documentary assessments, um, a deteriorating international security situation, a hollow defence force, and a strong national security related ministerial lineup in a new government to incorrectly conclude that defence is in for some sort of financial sugar rush. This is simply not going to happen. Uh, for reasons I outlined in the previous episode of Indefensible New Zealand. At this point, I wish to shamelessly award myself the Chocolate Fish of Honour Award for correctly picking three defence ministers in a row. Hop over to my other podcast, Voter Talk, where Heather Heather Roy and I discuss politics and play in English for verification. Now, if you want a stronger, more capable defence force for New Zealand, then lobbying is an essential and largely missing element of pursuing that. Most people's idea of lobbying apart from hiring a professional lobbyist, is getting a meeting with a minister. Now, if you manage to, you'll be lucky to get 10 to 15 minutes of their time. You will be competing with their external party demands, electorate needs, caucus activities, cabinet meetings, portfolio requirements, and a host of other duties and events. You get the picture? I'm not saying don't meet with the minister. Just don't base your plan solely on that. Politicians like to be offered solutions. To do that, you might need to first point out the problem indicating the risk it poses to the minister or their government. So clearly define the problem, develop courses of action, select a recommended course for the government based on specific criteria, do your best to cost your solution, and then personalise it to all the stakeholders. And believe me, there are a lot of stakeholders you must get into your tent in the defence lobby. Let's take a look through the top line. The Minister of Defence, the Honourable Judith Collins, is an experienced minister who has had Papakura military camp in her electorate from day one. She will be a diligent and supportive defence minister. However, that must be put in the context of the other six portfolios she holds. More about her later. The Associate Minister of Defence and Minister for Veterans is the Honourable Chris Pink. It's great to see the return of the Associate Defence portfolio. It's a huge portfolio to do well. Current service personnel and veterans will benefit from having a minister with operational service and Chris is an energetic, affable and capable bloke. He has served in both the Royal New Zealand Navy and the Royal Australian Navy and so he has the double benefit of having an ANZAC military peer group. The Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Select Committee or FADT as it's known is the place where defence related legislation is considered in detail between first and second readings. You can make oral or written submissions The committee can conduct inquiries and deal with petitions. The chair of the FADT committee is Tim van der Molen, National Party Waikato. Tim has experience as an Army Reserve Officer and was the party's defence spokesman until August 2023. The fact that he's been given this role indicates that the party is rehabilitating him after his brush with the Privileges Committee. A good, capable bloke. The deputy chair of FADT is the Honourable Penny Hienari, Labour, list. Penny Hirari was the Minister for Defence from the 2020 election until he was replaced by the Honourable Andrew Little in a cabinet reshuffle in January 2023. He had a disappointing term as Minister but remains Labour's defence spokesperson. The members of the FADT committee are Dana Kirkpatrick, National East Coast. Now I don't know anything about Dana except what is online. She comes from a farming background and has been working in managerial and journalism roles, so I'm guessing her main interest on FADT is trade. I intend to find out more and let you know in subsequent episodes. Tim Costley, National Party, Otaki. Tim was a wing commander in the Royal New Zealand Air Force. He's a pilot with 23 years service prior to entering Parliament. A smart and capable guy with an interest in making music videos on the side. Laura Trask, ACT Party, List. Another MP I need to find out more about. She self-describes as not planning to enter politics. No defence background, uh, but she's an owner and she's working within a family business. Honourable Damien O'Connor, Labour Party List. Uh, Now Damien's an experienced former Minister of Agriculture, Biosecurity, uh, Trade and Export Growth, Land Information and Rural Communities in the 6th Labour Government. He will be a workhorse on the committee and has a no-nonsense approach, as might be expected from a West Coaster. Golras Garaman, a Green Party List MP, was on this committee, but since I started drafting this episode, she has resigned as an MP. 
She has been replaced by Greenlist MP, former Wellington Mayor Celia Wade-Brown, uh, but it remains to be seen whether the Greens place her on this committee or elsewhere. And how about the departmental heads? We are about to see the most significant rotation of service chiefs in many years take place with potentially six two-star and above appointments rotating. I have already written on this and uh, will be following up with new episodes specifically on those appointments. The Secretary of Defence is Andrew Bridgman, a lawyer who has largely worked in the public service He's responsible for providing independent advice to government on defence matters, including acquisition and disposal of defence platforms. Now let's shift our attention to the portfolios that are tightly connected to defence. The easiest place to find these is in the ODESC. And that stands for the Officials Committee for Domestic and External Security Coordination. It's a New Zealand government committee which gives the Prime Minister strategic policy advice on security and intelligence matters. The committee comprises the chief executives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Defence Force, the Ministry of Defence, the Security Intelligence Service, the Government Communications Security Bureau, Police, the National Emergency Management Agency, the Treasury and others. The group is headed by the head of the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, currently Rebecca Kitteridge. It's a short journey from ODESC to see what ministers count in the Defence Lobby. They're listed here. First, the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Christopher Luxon, who is also the Minister for National Security. The Minister of Defence, as I mentioned, Honourable Judith Collins, and the Associate Minister of Defence, the Honourable Chris Pink. It's also the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Right Honourable Winston Peters, the Minister of NZSIS and GCSB, the Honourable Judith Collins, the Minister of Police, the Honourable Mark Mitchell, the Minister for Emergency Management and Recovery, also the Honourable Mark Mitchell, and the Minister of Finance, the Honourable Nicola Willis. However, don't forget that it takes a majority in the 20-seat cabinet to get a win, so everyone is important. Keep an eye on those holding related Associate Minister portfolios also like Foreign Affairs and Finance. They also have influence. Now the lion's share of cabinet work is actually done in cabinet subcommittees. These have not yet been declared and the cabinet is running on only two committees, the 100-day committee and the business committee. I'll put up a separate episode once we know who is on the External Relations and Security Committee, or ERS as it's known, uh, the Government uh, Administration and Expenditure Review Committee, uh, Gov, and others. Now let's talk about the Minister's staff, because no lobbying plan is complete without building relationships with, within the Minister's staff. They can facilitate or defeat your efforts with a couple of words. All Ministers run their offices slightly differently, but you should know who is the senior ministerial advisor, usually is a political appointment, the senior private secretary, who's usually a career ministerial services employee, and the senior press secretary, usually an external appointment. The difference between senior and not senior in those titles is really just about pay scales. Now, there are also seconded personnel in each minister's office called private secretaries, and they come from the, the departments for which the minister has responsibility. So the bigger the department or the bigger the portfolio, and the more portfolios the minister has, the greater the number of private secretaries they'll have. Now let's have a look at the primary team. At a glance, we have a very strong defence team with an experienced minister leading the charge and an energetic associate minister with sea boots on the ground time. There is strong alignment between portfolios and Collins lineup with defence, SIS, GCSB, space, science and innovation and technology, as well as her responsibility for the response to the, uh, the mosque attacks. It has become a to topic of discussion, however, about the degree of independent scrutiny that this situation, i.e. Collins, provides. There's two independent inspectors, one for defence and one for the intelligence agencies, but few actual resources and muddy legislation about the overlap. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. One suggestion is that Pink's letter of delegation should be similar to former Associate Minister of Defence Heather Roy's, which gave her responsibility for pretty much everything in defence except operations. Like to know more? Well, Heather Roy and I have been teaching people how to lobby central and local government for over 10 years. Uh, before that, we were on the receiving end of it. So we know a lot about lobbying, and you can learn more about it by coming along to one of our uh, lobby talk courses one day you can uh, they're experiential learning programs they're great fun you'll learn heaps and you can find out more of those on our website at talkpoint it's t-o-r-q-u-e-p-o-i-n-t talkpoint.co.nz thanks for tuning in if you've got any questions for subsequent episodes in this podcast 
please send them through to me via the website and I'll be happy to uh, answer them, address them in, in subsequent episodes. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.